Welcome to Smart Compression for VLU Management. We've discussed the etiology of venous leg ulcers, proper assessment, and best practice strategies for VLU management. Now we'll explore the role of compression therapy with Dr. John McDonald, who is extensively involved in clinical and research aspects of wound care and lymphedema. So why does compression therapy work so well? Well, it actually it can be very technical with medical jargon and it can be very simple in, in basic physics. But what compression does, it attacks the problem that comes from the venous hypertension. Compression neutralizes the pressure in the venous system. Mm -hmm. Compression also pushes fluid in the area of the base of the wound away from the wound past obstructive lymphatics into normal lymphatics, giving the area around the wound the normal characters of a healing wound where all the bad chronic wound fluid is taken away. Okay. And we know that the compression does what the vac does in mm. removing the bad fluid. Exactly. It makes a clean wound bed that then nature can heal. But also the thing that people forget because it's new and they perhaps have heard it once and don't believe it, is compression has a very positive effect on the venous system okay. for the reasons we mentioned, controlling venous hypertension, on the lymphatic system for pushing the, the protein lymph, high protein lymph, past the block lymphatics, but it also has a very positive effect on the arterial system because we have evidence based now that compression up to a limit of 40 millimeters of mercury, even in the compromised limb, increases microarterial flow. Interesting. It's so important that people just, this is all evidence-based within the last 10 years. It's very easy to look this up. But the reason this is so important that so often good, well-trained doctors and nurses, certain surgical specialties that I will not mention by name, will say to us, you can't use compression on my patient because you're gonna shut off the blood supply. Mm -hmm. But we now have active proof that not only does compression help in the things we know about venous ulcers, but it actually increases arterial, fly, or arterial uh, supply to the leg because slight non-sustained compression increases arterial flow through little mediators that are released by the increase in the speed of the flow from the compression. So that even in compromised limbs, compression does positive things to help to heal the wound. So can we talk a little bit about what is the current standard of care for VLUs? The, the standard of care for VLUs uh, is compression. But the real godfather uh, of modern uh, venous ulcer treatment uh, was Dr. Una, okay. who, as it just so happens, invented the Una, Una boot, boot that everybody in medicine is aware of. The Una boot works imitating normal physiology. So for years, the Una boot is what we had. And when people used it and did it well, we had very, very good, very good results. But is it easy to use? It's, you, it's a strong learning curve. Okay. You have to, it's, uh, one that the patients often are not comfortable with because it's wet and can ooze. The patient can feel that. Okay. It's difficult sometimes to ambulate, but it did work. Okay. But now what we have is we have the principle of short stretch that has been established. And you have a product, the first product that I've seen, and, and, I'm, and I'm being perfectly honest, it was in 2005 or six when I saw Coban 2 okay. presented to me as a device for compression. And I said, my God, this is a modern Unaboot. This is what it is. This is, and I said, to think about it, we had the Model T that Henry Ford gave us mm -hmm. that started motor vehicles, a motor, how it works, the principle of the engine yep. and getting transportation. That's what Dr. Una gave us. But now we have a Mercedes or the Maserati with all of the things that, that improve on the Model T that make it more compatible for patients. This is what you see in Coban 2 and Coban 2 Lite. It's, it imitates the gold standard, but it gives all of the modern conditions that makes it much more compliant for the patient. It's easier learning curve to put on. It doesn't slip. Patients can wear their shoes. The nurses and doctors can, can look at it and put it on and take it off in minutes. It's comfortable. It doesn't ooze. 
takes all the things that the Model T did and all the noise and all the contraptions and all the stuff, it gets rid of all that and still maintains the basic principle. So do most clinicians use compression therapy then? Or is no, it still not? No, no. It's it, here, it, it, this is very interesting to me. And this is why at times uh, uh, myself and the, my colleagues who are involved in trying to teach compression to our brother, sister clinicians, a, a, a very small percentage of the world clinicians understand the need for compression. They don't, they don't know how it works. They don't understand about the, the working pressure and the resting pressure. And they're afraid of compression. Any, I, so often I will go from clinic to clinic and they'll say, Dr. McDonald, we're having trouble healing this wound. And I'll walk in and I'll just show all the, the pitting around mm -hmm. the wound that needs compression. They'll say, well, we can't use compression. The patient's a diabetic. But yes, you can use compression with the diabetic. Or we can't use compression because the patient once had a history of congestive failure. But there are ways you can do it because you must use compression. And by using short stretch compression, you can make a lot of things happen. And once you do, it changes the whole picture. So talk a little bit about what are the key features of good compression? If you were to choose a product, what would be the attributes that you'd, you'd look for? Wonderful question. You want, what you want is the attributes that the patient likes and the attributes that the clinician likes. And let's start with the clinician. What is the clinician like? Number one, it's cost effective. Number two, it's something that's durable that can be worn for a week at a time if they have to. Number three, it's easy to teach. You, can, you know the pressure you're putting on just because it's non-stretch. It takes very little time, so you're saving time in the clinic. And the patients uh, will, will see it, and the patients will understand what you're doing because you can explain it as you're putting it on. So that's for the clinician, and you get good results. For the patient, mm -hmm. It doesn't slip. The patients can wear their shoes. The vast majority of patients can wear their shoes. And what you're doing is telling these patients, we want you to be ambulatory. We want you to go out and walk. So for the patient, it doesn't mess up their daily habits. And they can wear it for as long as a week. And it maintains its pressure. And the old Una boot, for instance, very often the pressure within a day or two as the soiling went down, the pressure, the, the Una boot would get the too loose. The co-band, because of the way it's built with the foam, sticks to the leg, maintains the leg, and it's comfortable. So these are the ideal compression things. It's compatible, it's painless, it's easy to, to use, it's cost effective, and most of all, it works. The thing that you're doing is not only trying to treat the wound, but you have to maintain the quality of life. Yeah. And when you think about suddenly going out with some kind of a dressing on your leg, even if you're trying compression, good compression, but you can't wear your shoe or you're tripping it down the steps or it's uncomfortable at night because it's too tight or too much pressure, the patients are gonna take it off. But if you can use a compression device that is compatible with daily life, the chances of a cure are enormous.